Hey guys and welcome to another edition of The Most Motion Show. In this video we are going to look at how we can use nerve um, compression and how we can free that off to allow a better run stride. Now I've been talking to a lot of people recently um, about hip extension and it's really common that um, people use the reason of tight hip flexors for um, the the reason oh, my brain's gone to sleep today. <laughs> okay, so let me start that sentence again. So people ha are struggling with their run stride and oftentimes uh, tight hip flexors are blamed. Now, I'm not saying that that's not the case, but it's not always the only case. So what we're going to do today is have a look at ways we can open up the hip flexors and stop that tightness feeding down from the rib cage down the th through the front of your pelvis, down into your legs, will stop your IT band tightness, will stop your um, quads feeling like concrete, will stop your hamstring tightness, calf tightness, all that kind of stuff, just by releasing the diaphragm and underneath the rib cage. okay? It's very, very simple to do, and I'll show you this just in a couple of minutes, okay? So I'm gonna stand up and show you. Seeing as how my brain doesn't seem to be getting my words out today, We'll just do the movement instead. Okay, so you can do this with your feet shoulder width apart, you can do it one foot in front of the other, you can really do it however you like, okay? All we're going to do is make sure that your hips stay level, so they're facing forwards the whole time, because what I'm going to do is rotate my upper body so that my um, core has got a stretch through it, okay? So I'm aiming kind of underneath the rib cage just at the front here, and I'm going to lean backwards to make that more of a stretch. Okay? Now from here, I'm not really going to move my ribs very much. In fact, I'm just going to put my hands here so you can see. And I'm just going to move my hips instead. Okay? Now all of this should be gentle. I'm not dumping my weight into my lower back. Okay? So I'm not kind of just plunking my weight down like that. I'm lifting my rib cage up and out and keeping my hips facing forwards. Okay? So there's a twist there. And as I move my hips around in different directions through here, we're unwinding the tissue and um, the bit of the hip flexor that actually attaches underneath the rib cage. Okay, so just by doing this simple little movement and trying to get as much um, difference in movement between your rib cage and your hips, okay, if your hips and your rib cage are following, so if I just do it like this, then actually nothing's happening, all you're doing is leaning sideways and moving around. Okay, what we need to do is isolate the uh, rib cage and get the hips moving. Okay, so every time I move backwards, for example, I can feel that more into my hip here. Where you can feel it will depend on where your tightness is. Okay, we'll go to the other side. So I'm turning my body, my rib cage to one side, and then I'm lifting up and over so I can get that stretch right down the front here and into my hip. And then I'm just going to start with circles on this side because that's what I feel like doing right now. And the direction of the movement really isn't important, okay? What is important is it's comfortably uncomfortable as a maximum. Okay, so I can go side to side. I can go uh, front to back. I can go around in circles. I can do figures of eight if I want to. The important thing is my rib cage is staying relatively still so that I am getting some difference in that tissue, okay? I want to make one end of it move while the other end of it is not moving and that way we will create length and we will get uh, the nerve compression to go away. At the same time as all of that's happening, so the nerve compression from under here is letting go, the tightness through the front of your body through the, through the leg is letting go. At the same time as doing that, by lifting up and over with the rib cage, we're also strengthening your back to stop you slumping back there in the first place. So, multi-purpose exercise, super, super simple. As always, if you've got any questions, then get them to me. You can get them to me at sarahatmostmotion.com or you can comment on this video or you can join us in the Smart Folks group um, in the Facebook group and add your comments in there. So you join us at Smart Folks, that's smart with two T's, folks.com. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again next time.